Governments around the world and donors are spending millions of dollars in increasing the opportunities for education and improving the quality of education. And these governments need to know what are the strategies that work. And because they only have limited resources, they need to know what is cost effective. Now, a new wave of economics research is using randomized control trials, just like those that are used in medicine, to answer these questions. How do we get kids in school? And how do we improve their learning while they're there? In our article for science, we summarize the results from this literature. And in particular, we look at the comparative cost effectiveness of over 30 programs that were tested through randomized controlled trials, where the outcome is test scores in primary schools in developing countries. And what we find is strikingly similar patterns across countries. And many of these results and these lessons challenge conventional wisdom. It's perhaps not surprising that economics plays an important role in the demand for education. If you reduce the costs of schooling, or if you provide cash transfers conditional on children going to school, then you'll increase the number of children going to school. What's more surprising is that even small changes in costs can have big impacts on behavior. So a program in Malawi provided cash transfers to families if their children went to school. Now, those cash transfers varied from $10 a month to $5 a month. There was really no difference in attendance in those two different categories. Another example is a program in Kenya that provided free school uniforms to children. Now, these uniforms cost just $8. And yet, providing this uniform increased school attendance by three percentage points. Now, $8 is small compared to the cost of educating a child. It's also small if you think about a family weighing all the costs and all the benefits of education. That $8 would change that decision is kind of surprising. It's also potentially surprising that one of the most cost-effective ways of increasing access to education as a health program. Treating children for parasitic worms in Kenya led to a 25% reduction in absenteeism rates for children. It increased the rate at which girls passed the school leaving exam. And 10 years later, it was increasing productivity of those children now in the workforce. Much recent work has focused on improving the quality of education. And the quality of education in many of these countries is really very poor. We see very high class sizes. Teachers are absent a lot. There are very few supplies like textbooks in the classroom. And children know very little, even if they're going to school quite regularly. Increasing these inputs, having more teachers, more textbooks, uh, and even giving schools flexible grants that they can spend as they like, had no impact on test scores. And the research suggests a number of reasons why more of the same doesn't seem to be effective. One of them is that children uh, have such a basic level of learning in these countries that they're falling behind the curricula. So when you provide textbooks to children, for example, those who score highly on the initial exam benefit, for, but the vast majority of children can't learn properly from the textbooks. Now, a number of programs have been designed to tailor the level of teaching to the level of the child to address this problem. One program in India, for example, assessed which children were falling behind and took them out of the class and provided basic remedial education. And that was very effective. Another program provided math software which allow children to learn at their own pace. And finally, a program in Kenya provided additional contract teachers, which allowed the schools to reduce class size, to divide a large class into two, with two different teachers. Now, simply reducing class size had no impact. But when those classes were divided based on the level of learning of the child, the program was quite effective. The second lesson 
is that teacher accountability is critical. As I've said, many teachers are absent from school in developing countries. And one approach to this was to link pay to whether teachers show up. Now, a program in India was very effective. It had teachers take a picture of themselves at the beginning and end of the day, and then their pay was linked to whether or not they showed up to school. And that increased teacher attendance. It also increased the test scores of the children. I think what's critical here is you've got to design the teacher incentive program effectively. You have to worry about teaching to the test, and you have to worry about teachers' supervisors undermining the incentive program. Now, all of this research is starting to change the way that investments in developing countries are made in education. I talked about the deworming program earlier. This has now been scaled up to across the whole of Kenya, and a number of Indian states are taking on mass school-based deworming. Over 40 million children now are dewormed through schools, largely as a result of this research. I think the next challenges are to look at pre-primary and post-primary education. We've had this huge wave of children completing primary school in developing countries, and that's fantastic. But these children are now looking for the opportunity to move on to secondary education, and the systems simply aren't there to cope with it. We have to find a way of providing secondary education in a way that is effective and that these countries can afford.